perfect all the time, but that vulnerability made him endearing. I found myself drawn to him, not just as a colleague, but as someone I wanted to support and care for. Eventually, our friendship blossomed into something more, and we started dating. Despite the initial skepticism from others about our age gap, Daniel and I were happy together. He brought a sense of joy and positivity into my life that I hadn't realized I was missing. But our happiness was often overshadowed by the presence of his overbearing mother area. Living under the same roof with Aria was a challenge. She had a knack for making me feel unwelcome, constantly nagging me about chores and responsibilities. It was like walking on eggshells every day, trying not to set her off. As I lay in bed, contemplating my options, I knew I couldn't continue living like this. I needed to have a serious conversation with Daniel about our future and the toxic environment created by his mother. But for now, I allowed myself to drift off to sleep, hoping for a clearer path forward when I woke up. Listening to Daniel's stories about his clumsy antics and personal mishaps, I found myself drawn to his endearing vulnerability. Despite being his boss and older, I never judged or criticized him for his blunders. Instead, I grew to appreciate his quirks and the genuine connection we shared. When Daniel finally confessed his feelings for me after my farewell bash, it took me by surprise. His awkward declaration, though unconventional, touched my heart. Wafa's confession could have been smoother, his sincerity won me over, and we embarked on a romantic journey together. Choosing to keep our relationship private, I refrained from seeking advice from friends or informing my parents about Daniel. I feared their judgment and preferred to keep our love affair between us. It wasn't until we were ready to announce our engagement that I shared the news with my family, cherishing the intimacy of our secret romance until then. Had someone been aware of the dynamics between us, they might have questioned, sure, he's pleasant company. But is he just coasting on your generosity, Ruby? Or pondered Ruby, you'd move mountains for him. But what efforts is he making in return? They might have even asked, what exactly does he contribute to the relationship, Ruby? It was often me who covered the expenses during our outings, given my higher income. Daniel never seemed to mind this arrangement. I don't remember him ever attempting to pay when we were out together. I was completely smitten with him, despite his clumsiness. And at the time, I saw no issue with our financial arrangement. However, looking back, I can't help but question if he was taking advantage of my willingness to pay. Worse yet, it appeared Daniel was oblivious to the fact that he was relying on me financially. He took for granted that I would always handle the bills, always thanking me with a bright smile. He seemed to genuinely appreciate my gesture. So the thought that I might be being exploited never crossed my mind. Daniel seemed to believe it was standard for the older partner to shoulder more responsibility, including financial ones. He also valued expressing gratitude, not seeing anything amiss with our arrangement. Perhaps he viewed me more as a dependable adult figure rather than a partner. In the professional realm, it's common for seniors to cover costs for their juniors, and it seemed Daniel applied this principle to our relationship. If anyone had scrutinized the way we managed our dating expenses, they might have been puzzled. However, Daniel and I kept the details of our relationship private. We decided to get married without anyone pointing out the unconventional aspects of our relationship. My family was ecstatic about the engagement. However, Daniel's mother was less than pleased upon discovering I was five years his senior. After sizing us both up, she expressed her concerns highlighting the age difference and its implications for future children. She hinted that Daniel could have chosen someone younger and presumably more attractive. Unfazed, Daniel responded with humor, suggesting that having an older wife has its perks, praising my ability to cover for his occasional absent-mindedness and declaring us a perfect pair. His mother, taken aback, didn't protest our marriage further. In hindsight, I wish she had been more vocal about her reservations before we married, rather than critiquing every aspect of our shared life afterward. Now that we live with his parents, following his father's sudden passing, her criticisms have become a daily ordeal. Initially resistant to the idea of living with my in-laws, I agree out of concern for his mother's well-being, 
hoping to offer support during a difficult time. Despite her initial coldness, Daniel and I moved into his family home, committing ourselves to care for her. However, my new living situation quickly became a nightmare. From the outset, Daniel's mother made it clear she wasn't fond of me. While Daniel retreated to his room, she cornered me with sharp words, insinuating I was a burden and needed to contribute to the household. Despite Daniel's assurances that his mother was happy about us moving in, it was evident her enthusiasm was solely for her son, not for me. My initial doubts were confirmed within months. Coexisting with her was impossible. I had always thought mothers were nurturing, but Daniel's mother was overly indulgent with him, catering to his every whim, yet her warmth never extended to me. Instead, I was seen as a rival, constantly criticized for my supposed lack of contribution to household chores. Her inability to grasp the concept of working from home frustrated me deeply. Despite explaining repeatedly that I was indeed working, not idling, she dismissed my profession, equating it to laziness and demanding I do more around the house. Her critiques, however, were conveniently absent in Daniel's presence. Driven to my limit, I decided to record her berating me, hoping to make Daniel understand my plight. When I played him the recordings, his response was dismissive, urging me to endure for the sake of family duties. It felt unfair, bearing the brunt of his mother's demands while he remained oblivious to the strain it put on me. The tension escalated one day when, exhausted from juggling work and endless chores, I allowed myself a brief nap, only to be rudely awakened by her accusing me of laziness. Despite my efforts to balance work with the household demands, her expectations were relentless, viewing any moment of rest as an opportunity to criticize. Caught in a cycle of frustration and exhaustion, I questioned the sustainability of living under constant scrutiny, where my contributions were overlooked and my need for rest scorned. It was a stark reminder of the imbalance in our household dynamics, where I was expected to shoulder an unfair share of responsibilities without acknowledgement or understanding. The accusation of being a slacker struck a nerve, especially as it was flung at me moments after being abruptly awakened from a much-needed rest. My frustration reached its boiling point, and I retorted sharply before storming off to my room. Admittedly, dozing off in the communal living space wasn't ideal. Once inside my room, I locked the door behind me and let the day's tensions fade as I slipped into bed, determined to leave this house upon waking. I wondered if Aria had taken my departure seriously, but she didn't interrupt my rest this time. Awakening later than usual, I realized I had missed dinner without encountering any of Aria's usual complaints. It was eerily quiet. Creeping downstairs, I found neither Aria nor Daniel at home seizing the opportunity to hastily begin packing my belongings. I reached out to a close friend who, upon hearing my ordeal, immediately offered her support and arrived with a truck to assist with my escape. Aria and Daniel returned home to find the truck loaded with my things. Aria's face twisted into a smug grin, seemingly pleased by my departure, while Daniel looked utterly confused. Confronted with the reality of my leaving, Daniel's bewildered questions about whether I was gathering trash only highlighted his obliviousness to my struggles. It was clear then that he had never truly acknowledged the weight of his mother's behavior towards me. Facing them both, I reiterated the issue of his mother's verbal abuse, which Daniel had previously dismissed as not a serious concern. His casual dismissal of my distress only deepened the rift between us. Aria watched on, smirking, perhaps underestimating the impact her actions had on Daniel's perception of the situation. I explained once more the relentless criticism and unreasonable expectations placed upon me by his mother, emphasizing my decision to leave this unbearable environment. Daniel's disbelief and stammering denial revealed his detachment from the reality of our home life. Resigned to his inability to grasp the severity of the situation, I declared my independence from their toxic household dynamics, questioning if Daniel had ever truly been there for me. This confrontation marked a turning point as I chose my well-being over a facade of familial harmony. This revelation left even Aria, who was fiercely protective of her son, in shock. 
Her outburst, accusing me of being a burden supported by Daniel, missed its intended mark, instead revealing a truth Daniel had kept from her. Confusion and panic crossed his face as he tried to clarify, yet Aria's anger only escalated, denouncing me for living off Daniel and shirking household duties, claiming her son was better off without such a wife. Daniel's reaction to his mother's words was one of pure astonishment, prompting him to correct her with a truth he kept hidden. He had been unemployed for over a year. The revelation that I had been the financial backbone, supporting us through my startup while Daniel struggled with job hunting, was news to Aria. It became clear that I had been covering all expenses, including those at Aria's house, under the assumption that Daniel was still actively seeking employment. The prospect of their financial instability without my income seemed to dawn on them only then. I, already contemplating separation due to the untenable situation, handed Daniel a lawyer's card signaling my decision. The shock and realization of their predicament rendered them speechless, their future uncertain without my support. Daniel's plea for me not to leave, hinting at his dependency, only affirmed my decision. It was evident he had sought comfort and care in our relationship, rather than a partnership of equals. As I departed, Daniel's attempts to reconcile were cut short by my friend's blunt dismissal of his pleas. In the time since leaving, I've learned that Daniel and Aria were forced to sell the family home, likely due to their inability to financially sustain it. Rumors of their new jobs at a supermarket reached me, but their lives are no longer my concern. Now, I relish the peace and productivity of living alone, free from the disruptions and demands of my former household.